This is a very quick introduction to the idea of uh, the pedagogical model of flipping the classroom. This is something that I've got quite interested in over the last year or two of research and um, I'm going to talk about this really in terms of what it might mean in arts education and specifically in a higher education situation, although this has also got applications to FE learning as well. One of the things that I'm faced with when I'm teaching in a higher education scenario is that traditionally lots of things would be um, taught or given forward to the students in this kind of traditional lecture hall format. However, in art colleges we don't tend to use this so much or it doesn't always seem like such an efficient way of teaching for us. Usually most of the teaching is taking place in the studio where students are engaged actively with tasks, they've been given specific uh, remits for projects to develop and often they're developing their own brief. One of the things that I'm engaged with at the college is teaching on the contextual studies section of the courses and this means that sometimes there is a feeling of it being kind of adjunct to student experience in the studio. And one of the reasons that I adopted uh, this method of flipping the classroom is to help to try and kind of utilize these skills in ways of learning that I've been applying in the studio to stuff that may have seemed more kind of lecture theater based. One of the things that I also got really interested in was looking at the grading matrix when we're looking at the highest uh, grades that students can achieve. So if we're aiming for excellence, if we're aiming for first class degrees, some of the things that we're asking students to do are to make work and develop projects that are based on wide ranging research that's initially tutor led, but always enhanced by self-directed inquiry. That follows through into their demonstration of clear insights, of understanding and showing how they're applying taught ideas and content. And also into the development of an ability to analyse and synthesise material, both in their visual and their written work. Their taught skills should demonstrate a very high level of competence and also the presentation of their work should be very high. So with a kind of old uh, traditional format of pedagogy, we could think about didactic models that are based on the idea of lecture plus homework equals learning. So traditionally we would have the lecture taking place in class time, we would have homework taking place as a self-paced activity, and then we would test learning through a hand-in. In the flipped classroom scenario, we've still got this same uh, uh, equation, I suppose, but the order in which these happen, or the way in which they happen, is quite different. So lectures are actually undertaken in a self-paced method. Students are logging in online um, and looking at a different kind of, either a curated reading, or a video, or maybe a video that I would have produced, and they're accessing that up to a week before the actual class will take place. Then their homework, their tasks, actually happen in class, so they benefit from the support of their tutor and also from their peers, which is one of the really different uh, things about this method. And then learning is also tested in class. So the idea, the notion of handing in a written submission or a written report becomes very different within this model. One of the things that I've had to get to grips with over the last year when trying to implement this in my teaching has been uh, making videos and making content prior to sessions. So rather than uh, using my in-class time to deliver maybe um, an assessment briefing or setting up the context for a new project, what I've started to do is make concise and short videos of those beforehand 
and releasing those to students, usually seven days before the session, and giving them time to run through that video. They can pause, they can rewind, they can take notes as they go. And then in class, we discuss what's been uh, the information that's been given in the video, and also their own action points from that. It allows them to ask loads more questions and engage a lot more readily and most importantly, it means that I don't have to repeat myself so often in class. So more of my time can be spent actually with one-to-one -one or small group support for students. One of the other ways that I've uh, started to adopt is to find other educational resources that are out there on the internet. Um, this example here is using the TED-Ed uh, setup. So this allows you to take any video that exists on YouTube and to flip it. So uh, you, could, you could have a look at TED Edge yourself, I'll have the link in a minute. And students again would be given this uh, prior to class, prior to our session. And then what happens in the session itself is that's used for clarifying the points that are brought up in the video that they've been watching. So you can see on the screen below here, this is a, a photograph of one of the whiteboards from the session where we've been discussing and teasing out different elements of the information that they're finding within this resource. Also, this is coupled by uh, setting up tasks that the students undertake in class, usually in small groups and sometimes individually, where they really start to employ the things that they're learning. So they're applying the information that they've gathered uh, through watching the video and also through this process of clarification that happens always at the start of class. And then they're actually actively working on a task that relates to uh, what they're working on in their module. So it does mean quite a lot more work and quite a lot more preparation in terms of the scheme of work. But what it really can allow you, allow you to get to is the point where the students within class and within their discussion with their peers are really starting to hit more and more of those high level abilities, those, those things that we're really looking for our students to do. Just to round up, one of the things that happens with this flipping of the classroom is that also a lot of your priorities as a lecturer tend to change. So one of the things that's been most interesting from this period of time is uh, watching how the work actually happens in class and is enhanced uh, by peer-to-peer -peer learning. So rather than uh, going away and sitting in their room on their own and struggling over research tasks, students are now able to actually ask each other for advice or input or clarify and check what they're learning as they go along. Also, something that's quite different for lecturers is that with the flipped classroom method, the initial exposure to topics or ideas or artists' work all happens outside of class. And those things are brought back in to feed the discussion that the students are having. So rather than maintaining this position of maybe long slide lectures where students' first exposure to an artist's work is coming through documentation that they're being shown in class, this actually allows them to get more self-directed with their processes of research, to find out more on their own and bring that back to share with the group. Also, students are using the class time to clarify and test out their own understanding. So rather than feeling alone with this, or rather than feeling like they're embarrassed about not getting it, they actually are using that time and being quite open and honest uh, with their peers and their tutor to really work through and really kind of pick away at the things they're, they're looking at. Also, students a lot more readily share and own their points of view and their realisation and their understanding more readily with their peers. So again, rather than feeling um, 
on their own with this and that this is a solitary pursuit, it makes it into a more cooperative and collaborative investigation. You'll see as well that rather than looking to tutors for answers, students start to test out knowledge with each other, which is really helpful. The tutor starts to act more as a curator of resources and a facilitator to learning, rather than a sage on the stage, so rather than a kind of didactic um, lecture hall model. Also, this frees you up for a lot more one-to-one -one contact and more differentiated learning. So because students are working at their own pace on these tasks, you can actually see how they're getting on in class situations and really help to facilitate them through. So we've got students who initially may not have performed as highly as they would have without uh, using this, this kind of didactic process. Also, I've seen that there's better attendance and better engagement in sessions by using this. So here's some links uh, for two things that I thought that you might find interesting to read. The first is on sophia.org, where you'll actually find lots of self-paced courses, um, and some of them will be really useful to you in your teaching practice. The second one is from a relatively new initiative called TED Ed. So this is from the people who uh, create and curate the TED Talks events, which those ones you can find on TED.com. And this is an introductory video lesson, really on how to start flipping uh, the classroom for yourself. People often ask as well, what's the kind of technology that I'm using to do this? So to record this video, I'm using a piece of software called ScreenFlow, and that's a screencasting and screen capture software that allows a e really easy to use interface with direct publishing options to things like YouTube and Vimeo. So it makes the whole process really straightforward. You don't need to learn a whole new um, set of video editing skills or anything like that. I'm also using trusty PowerPoint, so the text that you can see appearing on the screen, this is a PowerPoint presentation that I've prepared beforehand. Um, so using it in, conjunct in conjunction with ScreenFlow has given me a really kind of quick and easy to, easy to work with method for creating these presentations. And then I'm publishing these on Vimeo. So Vimeo is a little bit different to YouTube. It offers ad-free video hosting. It's quite clutter-free and it's easy to use. And we've got an account at the college which people could be using to upload um, videos in high definition. It's very, very simple, very easy to use. I've also been using, uh, through all of the open educational resources that I've been creating, I've been licensing these under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, share-alike license. If you want to uh, look at what that means, the Creative Commons website is really, um, again, very accessible, but very easy to see. And looking at the logo on the screen here, uh, you can see that really what it means is you need to credit who made the video, that it can only be used for non-commercial purposes, and that anything that you create from that also must be shared with others under the same license.